real African stories and real African experiences. This is a Legally Clueless video series. And in this episode, Kit shares a few lessons that she's learned from her kids. Uh, I've learned very many things about my children and about life from my children. And I just have some stories to tell. So one thing that I've learned from my children is kids are not very good in emergency situations. So last week, but one, I think, we were teaching my oldest, she's six years old, Candy, how to make an emergency call. So when you are, your phone is locked, there's a way that you can make an emergency call without unlocking the phone. You don't need a password, you don't need your fingerprint, nothing, right? That's a good skill for a child to learn in case something happens to their caregiver and they need to make a call to somebody else. So we called my husband, we called my sisters, we called my mother, and every time she picked up, every time the other person picked up, she said, I, I made an emergency call, and she was so excited, and then they simulated. I didn't tell them this was going to happen, but my family is very dramatic, and they just simulated different um, scenarios. They were like, okay, what's happening, Candy? What's going on? There's a bad guy. W okay, go hide, run and hide. I'm on my way, right? Stuff like that. So it was, uh, it was a nice game. Um, KO was involved, KO is three, uh, everybody was running, it was fun. Then I had this idea. <laughs> I told my husband, now what we're going to do is simulate a real emergency because the theory is there, but is the practical, like things on the ground. How are we going to do if something happens? Is this child going to remember her training? So Martin was leaving. He was going to the supermarket. This is about 6.30 in the evening. The nanny had already left, so it was just me and the children. I told him, be on standby. We're going to call you. What will you do? You don't worry about it. Let me handle that side um, and we'll call you. So he left. I went to the bedroom and put my phone in the, in the bedroom. And then I came back into the living room where they were sitting reading. And I said... Ah, my head is really hurting. And I fell down and fainted. And they, obviously my eyes are shut and I'm lying on my side like this. And there was a moment of, oh my goodness, right? Both of them, oh my goodness. And then mama, mama, they came to try and, and wake me. And then they were like, oh, she's joking. And then my son started to beat the shit out of me. <laughs> he was beating me. At that moment, I was like, mm, I need to stop. I need to like, I'm now I'm getting hurt. This kid is killing me, right? Because he was trying to wake me up with, any, like he was punching my face, slapping me. I was just like, now if I was actually in trouble, I'd be dead. My daughter was like, no, stop hitting her. Started to try and pick me up. And then they were like, no, she's joking. She's joking. My kids sat on the couch and continued reading with me on the floor. I said to myself, Kit, you have started this. You must see it through. Because what am I trying to do, right? I'm trying to see if she will actually remember her training. So I was just like, anyway... I just lay there, I don't know how long, maybe five minutes, I started to get a cramp. My kids were reading. I said to myself, Lord, what have I done to deserve these children? They are just not helping me. After a while, because of my dedication, they were like, oh my goodness, has she really actually fainted? They came back to try and, um, to try and wake me again. My son started to scream like a paid Mona, you know those, you just can understand, you can tell when somebody is in distress and when somebody is acting like they're in distress, but they are really not in distress. Screaming, yelling, shouting, ooh, yeah, just like a sound he never makes when he's actually distressed. I was just like, come on. I almost laughed, but I was like, no, no, no. So after a little bit of the fracas, my daughter went, I know, we should call Baba. We should, where's Mama's phone? And in my heart, I was just like, yes! And, he, and she went. My son remained there holding on to me. Holding on to me. And um, she went and she called uh, my husband and 
describe the situation and she she succeeded so by the time she was coming back i had started to wake up um and she went about telling everybody how she saved my life um she made an emergency call i fainted and she was on top of it she left out um the part where she was beating me where her brother was beating me and where they were wailing and when they ignored me and read a book the next lesson that i have learned from my children is everybody's job is nobody's job so this one time we went to the shaggy dog show you know about the shaggy dog show we love that show we always go it's a fair in the race course and these dogs and it's just um if you like pets if you love dogs the, that place is for you so we went there and my daughter at the time was about 2 to and a half and we were just sitting on the grass picnicking looking at the show enjoying our time there and then it was time to go so everybody got up and we said it's time to go and i turned around everybody turned around to pick up the stuff that we were i literally turned around to pick up my backpack turn turn back and my child was gone and we were like oh where's candy where's candy you know cuz i mean she's a kid how far could she possibly have gotten we looked around and we couldn't see her in our sphere of sight right turned around to the couple sitting behind us and we were like did you see the little girl we were with and they pointed haphazardly in some direction and said she went that way literally we just we didn't even talk to each other we just scattered in all directions i was heading towards the announcer and i was just going to be like my kid is lost you know give me whatever but we all just ran in every direction and we were our aim was to run towards the exits and look coming back because obviously if somebody has taken your child they're heading towards the exits so we did that and but i found her behind the announcer and i was like where are you going and she's like i'm going home what now what when i think about it what happened was i said let's go and she got up and started walking she was literally being obedient but nobody was watching her because everybody was watching her and that's where we got that this is true <laughs> um and we lost her it was maybe 3 and a half minutes it felt like 5 days <laughs> I, i can't lie to you <laughs> we we wept like when we reached when i got her i called everybody and i was like okay i found her people just came everybody was crying she was so confused she's like what's happening my sister you know again my sisters drama so my sisters were crying weeping everybody just no knees like you just don't have no knees you have no energy in your body oh <sighs> i get worked up thinking about it now but she's safe um um anyway so that's what i learned from that lesson another thing that i learned was there are no secrets um everything will come out <laughs> things that are done in the dark will come out in the light so um candy is uh, maybe 3 or 4 and she's being asked about her aunties and her uncles and she says oh, uh, well i can kiss mama and i can kiss baba but i don't think i can kiss uncles i don't like to kiss uncles only tata tawi kisses uncles and we were all like what what's that and then tawi my sister is like what mm? uh-huh. <clears throat> i i i, I, do, I do. <laughs> so we're like tawi kendi what do you mean what do you mean by you don't kiss uncles it's like yeah only tata tawi kisses uncles um she was kissing uncle kibe now kibe was Tawi's friend. Just a friend, just a friend, just a friend, just a friend. Okay? So Kibe was only, <laughs> always hanging about the house. We would hang out with him. Kibe is Tawi's friend. Right? Nothing more to it. But their big mistake was kissing in front of a child. So now we were like, "Oh, And that is how Tawi and that is how Kibe became Tawi's boyfriend. 
two years on, he is still there. Another thing that I learned from my children is um, understand the brief. Because you can be giving a solution to a problem that does not exist. One time we're coming from school and my three-year-old, Keo, says, Mama, what's in my head? And I said, what do you mean? And he said, yeah, what's in my head? And I said, it's your brain. He's like, mm, I don't want a brain. And I was like, okay. Now, I know you're thinking, um, the next step would have been to ask why, right? Why don't you want a brain? No, no, that is not what I did. I went into, but Keo, your brain helps you to move your hands, to walk, to see. And he was like, yeah, I want to move my hands. I want to walk. I want to see, but I don't want a brain. Then I was like, but Keo, you are wonderfully and beautifully made. You know, God, when he was making you, he knew exactly what he was doing. You, like I was preaching, right? I never once asked my kid, why don't you want a brain? He was like, mama, I don't want a brain. I want to be able to do all these things. Um, the brain, I can just remove the brain from my head. Can you help me remove the brain? Please, I don't want it. And then I was like, Kendi, what's happening here? What's up? What's going on with the brain? She's like, I don't know. She just doesn't want the brain. Kendi is my go-to. By the way, if I need to understand what my son is saying, I ask my daughter because they spend so much time together. So I'm like, can you translate? Because <laughs> I don't get it. Um, but anyway, it, it, it became such a big fight. When we got home, he refused to get out of the car. He was like, mama, I'm staying in the car. So I was like, peace do you. Um, uh, Kendi and I left, we went, I told the nanny, could you please go and get Keo, he's in the car. When she got there, he wasn't in the car. So now we were looking for Keo all over the neighborhood. <laughs> and when he, came, when he came home, he was crying and he's like, mama, you're a bad girl. And I was just like, Be because of the brain? story or is this something more <laughs> and he's just like i don't want a brain and i just said okay 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 so when i was telling my mom about this story she asked me kit why doesn't he want a brain and i was just like oh, i never asked <laughs> that's my bad i never asked him uh, but i don't maybe one day I, I will go back to him and be like hey that day mm, can we talk about that and and us and find out what the issue is there and the final story is nobody wants daddy's job because i don't know maybe it's hard whatever so one time my children and my niece and nephew are playing outside and my mom is in the house. I was at my sister's house. So I was far off and I didn't really hear the whole situation. But they're playing, playing, playing. And then after a little while, and my niece is eight. Candy is six. My nephew is five, almost six. And my son is three. So that's the age difference that you're looking at here. And they're playing um, house. So obviously there's a mama, there's a daddy, <laughs> there's children, there's a pet, whatever. And all of a sudden, my nephew cries so bitterly, right? From like from his, you know, that bitter crying. You just know somebody has really, really hurt this child. Not physically, it's just like a, they have hurt him deep in his soul so my mom runs out and he asks what she asks what's happening and everybody's just quiet looking at her and she's like i'm, I'm about to <laughs> y'all better tell me what is happening now right and 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 my nephew goes uh, they they we, we, they won't let me be the daddy and his sister my niece says howie not even Tot, now Tot is the dog. <laughs> Not even Tot is the daddy. Nobody is the daddy. 
And 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 my mother and my mother is so confused. She's like, I don't understand. The dog is in the thing. Like, why are people? I, uh, okay, what happened? I need you. You keep quiet, Hera. I need you to say something. What's happening here? Howie, why can't Howie be the daddy? And Howie's like, I want to be the daddy. And Hera says, No. Keo is the daddy. First of all, Keo is standing a bit off. I think she, he just saw the whole situation. He saw my mother come and he was like, me, I'm not a part of this. I am here in my own world. Um, so he's standing off and Hera says, no, Keo is the daddy. And Keo says, no, me, I'm Uncle Norman. No. <laughs> Uncle, <laughs> I okay. So Uncle Norman <laughs> is 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 my husband's brother, and they really look alike. And the first time that Ko met Uncle Norman, he was two years old. And when Norman walked up to us, because we're out in a park somewhere, and Norman walked up to us and he said, "Hi, Baba." He thought Martin had come back from the loo because they really do look alike. And so anyway, she, he decided he was not daddy, he was Uncle Norman, and my mom was <laughs> doubly confused. Okay, so there is no daddy, <laughs> there's only Uncle Norman, there is a dog who is the daddy. Yeah, so anyway, she said, no, um, how he can be the daddy if, if he wants. And it's just all these life lessons lend themselves in such a convoluted, confusing, haphazard way, but they all teach me something. Thanks for watching this episode. Remember you can catch new Legally Clueless video episodes every Friday and new audio episodes every Monday.